Go. Hi, uh, my name is Jim Barnes. I'm the CFO of the Buffalo Public Schools. We're here tonight to give uh, three annual updates on the Contract for Excellence 23-24 budget, on a review of the 23-24 foundation aid increases and how it's being utilized in our budget. And the last presentation tonight will be an ARP ESSER update. So we're going to start with the contract for excellence, the 23-24 budget. Uh, some background, the contract for excellence was established by state legislation back in 2007 and 8. The intent of that legislation was to improve student achievement, but it predominantly benefit students with the greatest educational needs and the students in low performing schools. CFRI is not a grant. Instead, CFRI is a set of restrictions placed on a portion of the district's foundation aid. Uh, this is commonly referred to as a set-aside within the district's general operating budget. Another well-known set-aside from foundation aid is the CSP, or Community Schools Program. Uh, what can the Contract for Excellence fund? Programs and activities that are implemented as part of CFE uh, must be aligned with the school's achievement needs and have the greatest likelihood of positively impacting student achievement. Districts must target the funds to students with the greatest educational needs, including but not limited to students with disabilities, students with limited English proficiency, ELL learners, and students living in poverty. Also students with low academic achievement. And we have to give priority to the schools serving concentrations of those children. Um, one thing I like to note here, while this is a set aside and it was established way back in 2007, there are other pots of money within the district's billion dollar of budgets that does the same thing. Our school based budgets and the formulas uh, that they use are largely based on these. Um, What are the requirements for the Contract for Excellence? Big five city school districts must allocate at least 75% of the funds to benefit uh, students that are having, to, be, to benefit students having the greatest educational needs as measured against total school enrollment, such as poverty, disability, limited English proficiency, and low student performance. So it's again, it's a foundation aid set aside that's targeted to these groups to hopefully improve achievement. The law specifies six categories of allowable programs, class size reduction, teacher and principal quality initiatives, middle and high school restructuring, full day pre-K and kindergarten, and model programs for ELL. The big news with c for e uh, is it's the increase in the set aside this year. The foundation aid formula is now fully funded by the state in the 23-24 budget. You'll hear a little bit about that in the second presentation. So since foundation aid's formula is fully funded and CFE is a set aside, the state's mandating that the allocation to the C for E budget also increases for the first time in 10 years. It's always been 13 million this year it's 20 million dollars the table included uh, in the presentation shows the uh, state allocation and their phasing of the increase uh, for cfe set asides so the 23 24 budget is 20 million dollars that's seven million dollars more 
uh, than the $13 million that was the c e budget the prior 10 years. Uh, those funds are allocated to schools by two methods, centrally allocated programs and flexible funds based upon student enrollments in the school. The centrally allocated programs uh, reduce class size teachers at 45, 79, and 80. There's about 31 of those being funded from c e and then the model programs for ELL students, including cultural resource aids, multilingual teacher aids, multilingual teacher assistants, coordinators, and extended learning programs. That totals about 14 FTEs. Staff is centrally allocated by the multilingual departments based upon their review of the needs of the individual students at the schools. In addition to those buckets, Another 19 social workers and 29 guidance counselors are funded for c e Again, the guidance and special ed departments centrally allocate these positions based on their review of the needs of the individual students in the schools. Uh, in addition, this year, supplemental arts and music programs, c e is funding eight teachers. Again, put in the uh, art and music department, they allocate them out to the schools based upon their assessment of the situation. In addition, uh, the uh, Accelerated Credit Recovery Program that's designed for the 12th grade students at risk of non-completion, uh, it provides transportation and after-school center for that work. Uh, we purchased some software out of c for about $320,000. The second part, or second method of allocation of the c e money is through the, what we call the flexible program or the school-based budgets. A total of 29 FTEs, teachers, teacher aides, guidance counselors, were chosen by the schools during the, during the school-based budget process. Uh, and lastly, some of those schools purchased numerous other items to uh, fully budget their allocations for about $28,000. Um, in total, c e funds, I think, 133 FTEs, and it's $20 million set aside from our revenues and dedicated to the uh, guidelines for uh, this, the state put, provides for a c e program. Uh, you can view the contract online, and you can contact us by email with any comments or questions on the c e budget for this year or background regarding the C-Free program itself. Yes? So in the three schools that you pay to have smaller class sizes, yes. how much smaller are the classes? That's a good question. I don't know specifically what the numbers, what they were and before, before and after, but I can get you that. Do you know, Darlene? Yes. That's correct. Okay. That that is absolutely right. That's the little like 8.3 or whatever school gets. That's right. And, and I'm writing down your question. Class size reduction. I'll get you that answer. Okay, Edmir, I'm gonna start talking about uh, foundation aid for 23, 24 year. And I, I do I have to apologize for the viewers. I don't quite know where to look. So, and I have a flicker tonight. I'm not saying next slide, Admir. So the second presentation tonight is on the 23-24 foundation aid. Uh, each year, in those years where foundation aid increases, we are asked to explain how they're being utilized in our budget. So first thing I wanted to start out with was to show uh, the trends in foundation aid. The full funding of foundation aid was legislated back in 21-22. It called for a three-year phase-in to a full formula during the years 21-22 through 23-24. The 23-24, the year we're in, is the last year of the phase-in. There will be no more increases like we, the size of which we've seen in the, the prior two years. 
And the record setting foundation aid in the 23-24 budget is also in part due to an 8% CPI increase in the foundation aid per pupil amount. Real quick, not to digress too much, foundation aid is our largest single source of revenue. Uh, it's about $690 million. That's about 70% uh, of our total aid and about 85% of our total state aid. So it's by far the most important bucket of money we get. When we refer to the formula, how foundation aid is calculated in its most simple uh, explanation is, it takes account of our students and it multiplies them by a per pupil rate. Now, a lot of factors go into the definition of the number of students and the per pupil rate, but it is that simple. So if you're getting a drop in enrollment, you're gonna get less foundation aid. If something like the CPI uh, impacts your aid per student, you're gonna get more. Uh, there's numerous factors that affects both of those, uh, but in a simpler form, it's student count times aid per pupil. Yes, that's what it is. Historically, it was at 2%, almost for 10 years. Along with the last year of the phase-in, we got an 8% increase uh, due to CPI. So that's, those are the reasons for the record amount of foundation aid. The table at the bottom just shows the increases in foundation aid over the three-year phase-in. In 2021, we received $544 million in foundation aid. It was not fully funded. The formula actually calculated us receiving about 600 million. The state took the same amount on a percentage basis from every district in the state because they had budget problems. So beginning in 21-22, they started phasing it into the full funding formula and that, that started these year-to-year incre -year increases. $41 million in 21-22, $34 million increase in 22-23, and in the current year, we're estimated to receive a $69 million increase just in foundation aid. So the planned uses for that. The $69.2 million increase in foundation aid that's expected in the 23-24 will be utilized to fund the following items. A $55.3 million increase in BTF costs. This includes overtime and benefits and uh, all calculated on the new contract. So that's projected for the uh, projected BTF cost for the second year of their new contract. $9.3 million in increases in charter tuitions. I think we're expecting charter tuitions to go up 732. Uh, that, and that's related to one new school and seven schools that are adding grade levels. $2 million in enhanced security programs, including 30 additional guards. $4 million for increases in family and community engagement programs, and that's your overall umbrella for everything under uh, Ramona. Uh, and $3 million for increases in the athletic budget. When you add all those up, it's a little bit more than the 69.2, but that's where that money was allocated in our budget process. Any questions on that? Okay. Ed Mayor, if we can go to the third and final presentation on our Besser update. You know, I've prepared myself for a lot of public feedback, Ed, on this one. So, let's start with the, the background. Uh, I wanted to give the law behind it, but in yellow, it's basically two buckets of money. ESSER 2, uh, the project period was March 13th, 2020 and it ends this September 30th, 2023. Funds must be fully liquidated by October 1st. Too fancy a language. It means that grant has to be closed out and submitted to the state for reimbursement during October. 
The ESSER II grant was for $89.2 million. I'll show you where we are on the next slide. Then there was a third bucket of money, and that was called ESSER III. If you look at the yellow again, the project period uh, for that grant was March 13th, 2020, but it extends for an additional year to September 30th, 2024. Funds have to be fully liquidated by October 2024. We have to submit, close it out, audit it, and submit it for reimbursement by October 31st of next year. The ESSER III grant award was for $200.4 million. So in total, we will be reimbursed for $289 million in ARP ESSER. Uh, as we all know, the purpose of these funds are to address the diverse needs arising from the exacerbated COVID-19 pandemic, to emerge stronger post-pandemic, including responding to student social, emotional, and mental health, and the academic needs, and continuing to provide educational service as schools responded and recovered from the pandemic. Um, that's a little wordy, and the actual categories and definitions are even more elaborate, and uh, we've ensured that we are in compliance with all of it. So let's take a look at where we are. Spending. This is actual spending to date. Checks written. Um, I have uh, the ESSER two in the, in the first column, and then ESSER three, and then total. Uh, ESSER three started way back in 2021. We spent $7 million there. And then the other columns are two years ago, 21, 22, actual spending, 22, 23, actual spending. And there's been a little bit of spending on the ESSER 3 and 23, 24 already. But in total, uh, if you look at the ESSER 2 line, total 87960000 the, the grant award in yellow was for $89 million. We've spent 98.65%. However, what we're doing now is, calc is closing it out and auditing it, and part of that is you do indirect charges and some other movement of money. So by the time we close it out and submit it to the state, we will be 100% spent. Not a dime will go back. Now let's take a look at that second row, the ESSER 3. The total amount we've spent so far is 129551 The grant award? was 200 million. So we've already spent 64.65% of that grant. Uh, as I get into the next slide, we've fully budgeted to spend it. We're more than on track to spend it. There won't be a dime left. I met with a couple of other community groups. I think one was in Mount Olive Baptist Church, and uh, they were talking about potentially contacting the state about extending the deadlines for spending it, uh, that doesn't apply to our district. We will spend every penny of this. So in total, through like the end of last week, we spent a total of 217 million out of the $289 million grant award. We've, we've already spent 75% of it. So I'll take a little bit deeper dive. You asked what's different tonight. Here's a little more uh, uh, better breakdown. The BTF contract settlement, $45 million. With a $28 million bonus and a $17 million retro payment made to the teachers funded through our vessel. IT related expenditures. We spent $31.7 million on IT related items such as laptops and tablets, interactive whiteboards, network rebuild and security, and instructional and operational software. We spent $15.4 million on summer school. The plant department has spent $13.6 million. $10.2 million in building improvements, largely the new HVA systems that are supposed to be installed at every school. 600,000 in cleaning equipment and supplies, 1.2 million for nine additional tradesmen that are funded through our Besser, and about $500,000 in engineer and custodian overtime for cleaning and other things. 
Nursing services. The cost of our nursing services has quintupled in the last two, three years. It was typically funded through a grant dedicated to that, and the million dollars. That contracts and those services provided uh, over the last two years has skyrocketed, and we used almost four million dollars of our best money to fund that. These include the evolved scanners, two-way radios, and one FTEs, uh, one supervisor, and 50 security guards. Uh, After-school programs have received $4.4 million from the officer. Safety supplies, this was like in the first year. Do you remember everybody ordering a million masks and the foots and the hand things? $1.3 million. And then the largest chunk of salary, except for the BTF contract, the salary and benefits for central office and school-based staff is $27 million we've spent out of our finesse so far. This page is a detail of this total column. So now we're going to look at the current year's ARP ESSER budget. It's called ESSER 3. Um, we'll not have the exact to the penny 23-24 budget until ESSER 2 is closed out. Uh, there's a lot of accounting and regulatory little procedures. You have to close out the prior year before you can get the exact estimate for your current year budget. The estimated time frame for that is October. However, a close approximation of the final year budget is $94 million, and this includes 313 FTEs. Currently, the final year of the SR3 budget includes the second phase of the HVAC upgrades, $5 million, another 14.3 in IT-related expenditures, uh, phase two of the interactive uh, display refresh and another laptop refresh, after school program, 8.8 .8 million is in this year's ARP ESSER budget. Summer school, budgeted at $9.6 million this year. That's ARP ESSER. Um, there's a new reading series tied to the learning loss initiative uh, of the ARP ESSER funding, $6.5 million. Security will receive an additional $3.3 .3 million in the current year. 51 FTEs and some miscellaneous contracts for training. Then the last bucket and the largest FTEs and staffing, 263 FTEs and about $30 million with benefits. This includes 51 central office F FTEs. Uh, within that are 10 tradesmen. And at the school-based level, 212 FTEs. 81 teachers, 24 coaches and coordinators, 21 psychologists, 16 assistant principals, 9 social workers, 4 attendance teachers, 36 aides and assistants, and 4 clerks. So, so far we're spending the money at a rapid pace. We won't return a dime. I've showed you the breakdown of the spending today and I've shown you the breakdown of the largest items final year budget. So we'll wrap this up with a peek at 24-25, where our ESSER no longer exists. So based upon these numbers that I discussed in the previous slide, the district has to find alternative funding for 313 FTEs and $94 million in total cost. The current four-year plan, which is the CFO and the district's barometer and filter for all decision making uh, includes absorbing approximately six million dollars of these costs in the general fund with everything else that's input into our district's finances over the five funds that it, that it incorporates uh, that's what we were able to conservatively squeeze into the four-year plan that we can fully expect to fund out of these numbers now we're not alone in this problem. Districts throughout the state are facing the same problem, and the state is currently collecting data on this issue. I just sent 
some of the data that you just saw to the state through the big five. Uh, so it's a statewide issue. Uh, district planning sessions to address this issue are being scheduled for early October with cabinet and division heads well ahead of the 24-25 budget year. Yes, Ed. Funding is not identified for those positions yet. No. Nope. So out of that 94 million, we have 6 million for research, 88 million? That's correct. At, at its most basic level with the facts and the planning that we've done to date, we've got 88 million. Uh, I can give you one other number that reduces that. I think the 5 million in after school or, well, it, it's, a, we really need to have these planning sessions now, but I'll try to whittle that number down a tiny bit more. Either the after school or the summer school will be placed in Title I, and the after school. So another five million comes off of that. We've already identified that can go into Title I. That's right. And that's the kind of planning that we need to start as a district right away, and we are scheduled to begin it in October. With the hundred million? Well, that's eighty three million. Yes. So is that you are you finding from your peers that's pretty common statewide? The problem is they're collecting data now. So we hope to get feedback through the big five on, on exactly it's not just the, the percentage, it's the total amount and it's the amount of what they're calling recurring expenditures, like FTEs. Uh, that is what they're focused on. The more recurring expenditures you put in our presser, the bigger problem you'll have finding alternative funding. Yeah. But we gave you, yeah, yeah. And again, the, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to present the facts on the spending. I don't have a feeling either way. Uh, my next, we've planned out the four-year plan. That probably includes 20 variables that could swing things, 10, 20 million dollars, depending on uh, how they perform. Uh, one of which is the revenue side and what the state budget will look like next year. We have no the grants. Yeah, so I can't give you an answer right now. This is going to take new grants. Yes, we've got one or two uh, actual inquiries and potential submissions, uh, but we don't know the dollar of those yet. Yes, it is. 
And again, I, I'm not uh, optimistic or pessimistic. It's just we got some work to do, and we're going to start that work in October. Those are the facts, yes. Well, thank you, everyone. And th that wraps up uh, our presentation, and I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot more about the ARP in uh, the coming months. Thank you.